So we'll be talking to you about that real soon. I just want to inspire you that we can do it, that we can grow organic food. This sister, Honorable Peace, she's, she's a wonderful sister here. I mean, she's a goddess. And for years, she has been not only growing the, 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 the best rice in the whole world, but she's been supporting women farmers in the Volta region. She's been given all kinds of awards. Even they made her an honorary citizen of Atlanta, Georgia. I mean, they love her. But we told them, you can't have her in Atlanta. We want her in Ghana, so that's what she did. So she's coming up in a few minutes. So again, give yourself a round of applause for being here at the right place, at the right time, at the right people, doing the right thing. And it, you know, we're going to bring on our sister that just got her citizenship. I'm so proud of her. She's doing a lot of good work here. She got one of the platforms called Wellness. And I'm telling you, if you're not on her platform, you're not on the platform on what's up. Uh, Dr. Kanita Grove uh, was originally from Denver by way of, was it, but Madagascar by way of Denver. Okay, she, uh, she's taught psychology at the college level for 25 years, but she looks like she's about 15 years old. Uh, president of the, uh, former president of the Black Psychologists of Denver. She graduated to Ghana in February 2014. Uh, she has a wellness platform that brings people together all over the world and unite us, educate us, allow us to market our products, learn to be healthy by um, great books like Dr. Sorry book, Chosen to Heal. So much positive information and energy is coming from this lady. So let's welcome Dr. Kanita Grove. With a round of applause. <laughs> I don't know how I get that title. I'm going to sit down so that okay. I can see my notes a little better. Okay, Thank you so much for that fantastic introduction. So, uh, yes, I'm so thrilled and excited to be a Ghanaian. Prior to getting my official citizenship, uh, locals would ask me, are you Ghanaian? You know, because folks would pick it up. They think, you look like you're from the north. And I look at them and I say, of course. So now that I have my official citizenship, when I get asked am I Ghanaian, I say, of course. So either way, it was just the same thing. So I, I represent that aspect, as uh, Brother David said, of the interfacing of the Africans in America and the Africans here in Ghana. I represent that logistical, philosophical, psychological cogwheel that takes place. So, I'm going to speak to that just a little bit because a lot of times we don't hear about that. We hear about business as we should. We hear about banking as we should. We hear about the environment and things like food sovereignty as we should. We hear about herbal medicine and so you don't have to freak out about every time something happens you have to rush to the states to go to a hospital. But you can get uh, excellent treatment here as you should. But we often don't hear about the psychological part so I'm going to share a little bit of information with you to help make the transition a lot smoother. So the platform that I created is called the Wellness Community. All of us here at the table are on it, except for our queen sister. It should be on a soon. All right. And we have Africans who, uh, we have Sudanese on the platform. We have people from Kenya. We have people from um, St. Vincent, Grenadine. We have people from Jamaica. We have people from Nigeria. We have people all over uh, on the platform. And we come together for two reasons, to strengthen reunification and to build capacity in whatever way that we can. And so we do it and we do it unapologetically and we do it aggressively. And we talk about everything on that platform except religion. And then we created a platform just for that. So, uh, so I'll run through just a short list of things that you will want to be cognizant of to help make that transition smoother. I notice a lot of times, not only in my profession, but also just in my personal life that uh, sometimes when we get angry with each other, we say what we really feel and what we really think. And those are teachable moments because when you get into arguments with people, as I have with everybody on this platform, <laughs> you learn some things about yourself, you learn some things about the other person, right? You learn how to get angry. You learn how to control yourself and you learn not to take yourself so seriously but you also learn that you have some attitudes about Ghanaians and Africa that you may not realize that you have that's been implanted. 
and it comes out in bouts of anger. And so this is something to pay attention to so that you can keep it in check. Another thing that happens when we come here is that we're not accustomed to the degrees of freedom that our brothers and sisters here enjoy and just in many instances take for granted. We're not accustomed to that. So there may be some things that seem like they're too loose for you or too slow or too disorganized. And in fact, that's not it. It is in fact freedom, but you don't recognize it, at least right away. So that's another thing to pay attention to and to be mindful of is degrees of freedom. The other thing is how we process anger differently. So here in Ghana, you know, we can shout at each other. We often confront each other. I adore how good Ghanaians are at confronting. If there's a problem, they're going to let you know. Uh, we're not accustomed to that in the States. We're not. We're accustomed to taking it personally. We're, take, we're accustomed to making it a front, uh, an offense. Uh, we're accustomed to felony misdemeanors and all this other type of thing. But here, <laughs> but here it's just a normal thing. If there's something that somebody's unhappy with, they're going to come and tell you. And chances are they may even bring a couple of few people to help them tell you. <laughs> it is not what you think it is. It's not what you think it is. They're literally coming to confront you and to try to resolve the matter. Not only that, every Ghanaian in this room knows that when there's a fight, we rush to break it up. We don't run with our cameras and take pictures and egg people on. We rush to break it up. We do it 100% of the time. 100% of the time. That takes some getting used to. Another thing is that when you see arguments here, and they happen from time to time, we get into shouting matches at each other, uh, they're short-lived and they rarely, they rarely lead to physical violence. It's just a shouting match. But we're not accustomed to that in the States because we're triggered differently when it comes to the threat level. So we are accustomed when something is shouting, that means we're about to bring some heat with it. We're about to bring some fists behind it, right? We're going to, somebody about to catch these hands, right? But that's not the case here. Don't get it twisted. Don't come here ready to swing on everybody who hollers at you because you're going to be looked at really strangely. They're going to wonder what's wrong with you. Why do you have such a bad attitude? Why do you have such a chip on your shoulder? So this is another thing to learn is that shouting is just, that's it. It's just shouting. Uh, Bafour and I, we, we've had our run into this with each other. We've had our run into this with each other, although it's been a while, so we don't remember. We were due for another argument or two. <laughs> and then afterwards, we're cool. I mean, we're genuinely cool, and everybody's all right. You go on. This is a skill that has to be relearned for most of us. Another thing is that when you're going somewhere, especially if you're like me and you just live in a village and it's just you and everybody else, who's Ghanaian, a lot of times people will ask you where you're going. When that first happened to me, I was like, oh, you trying to case my place? You trying to want to which what's up? Why you want to know where I'm going, right? It wasn't that. It is concern. It is watch care. People want to be knowing your whereabouts so if someone's looking for you, if something happened, they can say, oh, well, she said she was going to the market a couple hours ago. Mm. So this, again, this, this privacy kind of a thing is something that we have to relearn. Uh, personal space is much tighter and closer, psychologically speaking, here in Ghana than it is in the States. This is too close in the States. <laughs> in Ghana, it is not. So uh, this is another thing that you have to adjust to because it can literally trigger an acute stress episode, an acute anxiety episode. It can literally trigger that if you're not mindful and make some plans to, to do this. Bartering is huge here. Just get ready. It is. Now, you know, you can't go into game or somewhere, you know, or Palace Mall trying to barter with products on the show. The price set is there. I did try it a few times on it. <laughs> but bartering is huge. Just get ready. It's there. It's not someone who's trying to be funny with you. It's just bartering. It's a very big system here. The other thing that I would say is that when you get into a mess or a problem with somebody, resist the temptation to attribute it to the country. You have a beef with this person, and that's it. It doesn't mean all Ghanaian men or all Ghanaian women or all the Ghanaians are this way, okay? It's the beef that you have with that person. And you guys are going to work it out or you're not going to work it out. But again, it's something to be mindful, uh, mindful of. I also want to hasten to say, that being said, this is a we and us situation. Not, uh, this is a we and our situation, not a us and them situation. So sometimes we have to correct each other when we're angry and when we're not angry. Sometimes we have to correct each other. 
and, and it may go something like this. Oh, babe, listen, obviously you're not remembering who I am right now, so I'm going to remember for the both of us. I'm not a black American, I'm an African. I was born and raised in America. And there are Africans born and raised in Russia, there are Africans born and raised in Japan, but we're all Africans. So sometimes we have to help each other remember, because in the heat of things or in the passion of things, we can forget. So these are all teachable moments. The other things that I want to say is that when you're planning on coming here, uh, I heard uh, my son tell someone earlier, don't romanticize coming here. Put forth your logistical plans. You need to make plans for things like uh, hospital stay, ambulatory care. You need to work that out. You need to do that in the state. You need to do that here. You're going to have problems with hospitals in the states. People get sued in the states. Let's, let's not act like the, the hospitals in the U.S. are just a panacea and the best things that sliced bread. I reported people in the hospital in the States. Um, and so the, you need to make plans there, just like you need to make plans here. You need to make academic plans. You need to make plans for things like businesses versus employment, housing, citizenship. Are you going to get a citizenship or not? Some people want it, some people don't. Property ownership. I'm happy to see that through the years there's been extensive talk here on property ownership and how to do it. Uh, transportation issues, nightlife. How long does your dollar carry you here in terms of the type of lifestyle that you are accustomed to living? This is huge because you get here and you'll say, oh, well in dollars this is 75 cents. And then you get to thinking that you can just ball out, right? You're just balling out of control. No, you cannot. <laughs> You have to really logistically think well. You have to think in CDs. And then the other thing that I want to say to you is also look into the police system, the police department. I was talking a few months ago with the chief of police in Accra, although when I first started chatting with him, I didn't know he was the chief of police. But I saw this policeman and I was asking him to teach me uh, how I can do a citizen's arrest because I wanted to arrest some people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so he was explaining to me how to do it, and then I asked him the quintessential question, can I arrest police officers? And he laughed and said no, and I said, why not? And so <laughs> that's when he says, well, I'm the chief of police, and I'm telling you, you cannot arrest police officers. <laughs> so that's, that was that. But look into that the police force, how it works, how it's organized, what you need to report, what you don't need to report. It's huge. It'll save you a lot of headache. And then last but not least, I'm known in Ghana, I don't know if you guys knew this, I'm known in Ghana as a sex therapist. Did you know that? Wow. You know, I, don't know that I don't know how that happened. I don't. I don't. But anyway, um, when you're coming here, there are some things that are that are different, culturally speaking. But there are some things that's the same, and you owe it to yourself to do some homework in that regard as well, in terms of intimate exchanges with people. Otherwise, you're going to end up just being apples and oranges with each other, and you're going to create unnecessary conflict. So definitely, definitely, definitely delve into some of the sexual taboos or sexual attitudes or sexual practices. You're going to be doing yourself a huge favor. Take it from the sex therapist. It's true. And uh, that's pretty much what I have to say right now. Great. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. A wonderful soldier, you know, again, that's just perfect. Because see, we have to be on the battlefield. You know, we have to make, as she said, there's no religion. See, we're not religious people. We used to be religious people. We have gone from being religious people to spiritual people, en route to becoming gods and goddesses, okay, where we can walk on water, all right, where we can move obstacles out of our way, where we can live rich and successful in Africa without depending on it. Europeans, Chinese, and, and we're doing it. I mean, we are actually doing it, okay? And I'm really coming from my sex therapy because, you know, I, I want to learn everything that, I'm like a child. I've been here 30 some years and I still, I'm amazed at this wonderful mother called Africa. We have so many wonderful things here. Uh, you know, I, I asked a few people to come on board with their products. The sister that's selling the Jolly Bryce, Brother Foster, come on, come on, let's, Real quick, I want to introduce you to some great Ghanaian entrepreneurs because we got great entrepreneurs here uh, doing great things and we need to support them. Just briefly, Foster, you come up and, and uh, uh, 
I'll be calling a different one just briefly. Just briefly. Bring, bring, bring one of your products. As we prepare 